Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back. Today, I want to take an in-depth look at the Festival of the Lost exclusive auto rifle, the curated Braytech Werewolf. In the review, I hope to answer that question, is it worth grinding for? So I hope to fully explain the perks. I do have some really nice things to say about it, but I'm also going to be really hard on it at times. Give it an all-around good look, but there is something really important that you need to know about this weapon. And it's something that might change your mind entirely about it. There's a bug, an error, that has a real significant impact on how you should view this weapon. So as we go on, and if you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get videos when they drop live, and like and comment if you guys see fit. We're really close to 100,000, and would really love for you to be a part of that. It takes a good amount of grinding to obtain, a good amount of your time. It took me all day when the content dropped, and I was doing various activities. To be able to purchase it, you need to buy all the festival masks. You purchase them with Chocolate Strange coins, and you need a total of 150 coins to buy all of them. And once you're done getting them all, that now allows it to be unlocked to be able to be purchased for 1,000 candy. And don't worry about that too much, that 1,000 candy. As long as you're wearing the mask and activities, the candy's gonna drop, and by the time that you've purchased all of them, you're gonna have 1,000. I had well over 3,000 when I picked up my Braytech Werewolf. Now, a quick section here for farming the coins. I did a lot of activities, and to be honest, I don't have a true fastest way as of yet, but some good things are wearing the mask in PvP. The Altar of Sorrow is a really good way, the new activity. Each tier that you complete, you get a coin, and every patrol that you do, like kill enemies, things like that, it grants a coin on completion. So each tier, as you move up, you're getting a coin, and when you're on that final tier, I've had groups that I know they just don't have it, we don't have the damage. We won't kill that final boss. So once I realize that, I just go back to orbit, I get back to that area, start a fresh instance, and I do it all over again with a new group of people, starting at the first tier. Meanwhile, doing all those patrols that I see. Another really good way is the Haunted Forest, but you have to be doing the bounties, and keep doing them. The weeklies give you 5 coins, the dailies give you 2, and if you've done that on 3 characters, that's 54 coins. Now the extra bounties grant you 1, so I would get all the main ones done, and then max out the additional bounties that it's going to let you carry. Those additional bounties only grant 1, but in the forest itself you're going to find chests that grant 2 coins. After you complete it, complete your run, you get 6 or 7 or more, and collectively a run with the bounties, finding the chests. You get anywhere from 10 to 20 or a lot more. It takes a while, but please comment down below if you have a really good strategy for getting the Chocolate Strange coins. The Braytech Werewolf is a new version of the old Winter Wolf. It's 450 RPM, the precision frame class. The frame makes the recoil pattern more predictably vertical. For the stats on the curated roll, that's the one that we're talking about today with the range masterwork. It has a range of 95, a stability of 47, handling of 45, reload of 48, aim assist of 47, and a recoil directed stat of 74. It's got a massive range stat. All the other stats are average or a little bit better than average. Since it's a precision frame, it doesn't trail off that bad, but it does trail slightly to the left. For the perks, we have Hammer Forge for range, Armor Piercing Rounds, Rounds cause extra damage to combatants' shields, and Over Penetrate targets. It's a very under-the-radar perk that doesn't get talked about too much. We have Zen Moment, causing damage with this weapon increases its stability, and with Zen Moment, the stability is increased with each hit, capping out at 66% after 5 hits. The stability that's increased is off of the base stat, and in this case, it is 47. It takes 66% of that stat and then adds it on to the end, so you get almost up to about 80 stability when you have Zen Moment in full effect. And when you kind of stop and look at what they did, what Bungie did, they did something very cool with this weapon, very good with it. They put on a range mash to work and then Zen Moment for that stability. And so at the core, it has armor piercing rounds, near max range, very high stability, it makes it one of the best in class, and then it has multi kill clip to add on to that. Best base damage legendary perk now, and a couple things to remember and a couple tips for multi kill clip, it goes to times three. You're going to have your base damage, a times 1 is 17%, times 2 is 33%, times 3 is 50% more damage. And importantly, it has no cooldown. It can chain and chain, it can chain off of itself. You can get a kill reload, get a kill reload, and at least always have multi-kill clip times 1. So with how you want to use it, especially in PvE and higher end activities, on any weapon that has multi-kill clip, you're going to want to get a kill, then reload, use its times 1 stack to get a couple kills, 2 or 3, and then reload to get your times 2 or times 3 stack, then you're flowing, then you're moving. This way you're using that little extra damage that you're getting from multi-kill clip times 1 to get the 3 stack, instead of just using its base damage to try to get a 3 stack all in one clip. So the full body of work is a very high range stat, rounds over penetrate targets, Zen Moment allows a very high stability stat on a precision frame, it's a fine tuned spray machine with the best legendary damage dealing perk in the game. They did a really good job with it. The artifact has enhanced auto loader that you can pair with multi kill clip, you can add overload rounds on it, it can work in Season of the Undying. As far as how it performs, and I'm going to bring this statement up in PvP and at the end, and as a matter of fact, when the situation comes up, reviews in the future are going to get this stamp if it's warranted. 
I'm going to say this, you don't want to bring this into the raid. You don't want to bring this into the new dungeon. You don't want to bring it into Master Nightfalls, Master Hunts. You're not going to be taking it into comp in the Crucible. There are better options. So as far as this being a must-have PvE in-game shredder, the answer is no. However, you know what it really is good for? General play. That is something that kind of gets lost nowadays. Not everything has to be the best, and usually when something is figured that it isn't the best, or when you see it in the database, you just kind of look at it, you know it isn't the best. That doesn't mean that it can't do well. Leviathan's Breath, the bow that we talked about not too long ago, it's a great general play weapon. It does a lot of cool things. And honestly, there are some weapons and gear that aren't even good for general play. And what I mean by that general play are things like strikes, doing your dailies, vex offensive, 6v6 quick play, the menagerie. Throw it on, play some Destiny. It's fun for that. Now, if you do care about the best available options at all times, and I stress, there's nothing wrong with that, if you're like that, then this is going to be a hard pass for you. Very easy. You shouldn't be going for it. But for the collectors, definitely for AR users, it is a must-have. And for players that try different things when they're doing their general play sessions. It is the only 450 RPM AR that has multi-kill clip, and there are only three total ARs that have multi-kill clip, so it's good for what it is. And again, as you're firing it, very high range stat, very good stability with Zen moment, precision frame, very laser-like, it shoots through targets, so you're getting kills behind your main target, helping multi-kill clip immediately. There really is a lot to like, it's a spray and go type weapon, nothing more, nothing less. I really like what they did with it, it's a very cool combo, with everything together, it's really cool to take out and slay with. For PvP, here's where it really gets interesting, I've used it, I've had a lot of 40 plus kill games, I've had a we ran out of medals, and obviously results may vary, but I'm gonna dive into that a little bit later on in a moment. These do 26 to the head and 18 to the body, these precision frames. To hit your optimal time to kill, you need 6 headshots and 2 body shots, that's a total of 192 damage. And that's the key number when you see optimal TTK stats. That's six resilience. And if the enemy has a higher resilience stat, that's not gonna down them. That's why resilience matters. And I've often thought about making a video of that magic number and really talk about resilience in depth. Let me know down in the comment section if you'd like to see that. But out of all ARs, these have the slowest optimal time to kill at 0.93 seconds. And they also have the slowest body time to kill out of all ARs at 1.33 seconds. So you would think, well, at least it's relaxed. Six headshots, couple body shots, that's okay because it's an AR, it's a spray machine. Right before this video, I talked about how the Vigilance Wing isn't buffed, and I go through the full process of that. But these are things that are in Destiny, number rounding. The system takes a damage number, and say that number is 45.2. It's gonna round and then show the damage in game at 46. And as I stated in that previous video, it's one of the reasons that I'm really late to the party with reviews and things like that. So in this weapon's case, all you really have to do is test it. And for these, it's basically a new weapon to us, because the last time I used a 450 AR was the Uriel's Gift with high caliber rounds and tap the trigger. And I would think that a lot of you early D2 vets, that's the last time you pulled out a 450, probably around that time, during that AR meta. So these really haven't been seen, and I'll talk about that more in a moment, but if this was a true powerhouse, you would be seeing 450s out there before Shadowkeep. I haven't seen them in years. So that should tell you enough for the Crucible, if you want it for that. So the damage tells us it's doing 26 to the head, 18 to the body, 6 headshots, 2 body shots, 192 damage, that magic number. First off, 6 resilience survives 6 headshots and 2 body shots. Red flag. So the next thing we do is look at the body shot damage, because the crit has a multiplier. And I do have to give a shout out to Mercules from Massive Breakdown. There's a link down below to their spreadsheet. He's done work at Bungie to kind of confirm and walk me through this. And it's something I check, I work through all the numbers, I present it, and we talk about it a little bit, come to a conclusion. So 11 body shots at 18 damage is 198 damage. That should down 9 resilience or less, but in game, how come if you have 3 resilience, you survive that? That doesn't down them, because at 3 resilience, you have 189 health. That's a red flag. But at 2 resilience, it does down them with 11 body shots. So this is because the actual body damage is 17.1, 17.2, and the actual critical damage is 25.1, 25.2. So on the screen, there's gonna be zero resilience up to four resilience with the health that you have. 11 body shots to three resilience survived, two resilience got downed. At 17.1 damage at 11 body shots, that's 188.1, there's that in between and you see why 3 resilience survived and 2 got down. So the real damage in game for these is 25 to the head, 17 to the body, not 26 to the head, 18 to the body. 
and that rounding did 17.1 to 18, and the crit 25 to 26, all rounding up. This changes things. What we think is a relaxed TTK, that six headshots, two body shots, is actually seven headshots and one body shot to achieve that optimal time to kill. And that 25 crit, 17 body, 17.1, is 192 damage with seven headshots and a body. And if they're higher than six resilience, you need eight shots, 100% accuracy. It's not good, that's a red flag. It really does change everything for it because it goes down the line. Remember, you're already at the slowest time to kill optimally and to the body for every single AR archetype. Multi-kill clip times one does 30 to the head with the rounding. It's actually doing 29 to the head. So that allows you to kill in seven headshots. The TTK shifts from 0.93 to 0.8 now with multi-kill clip times one. So the curated roll isn't really doing what you think it does. For the perks, if you want this for the Crucible, you do want kill clip. Multi-kill clip is really good, but the base damage is so low on an auto rifle that it isn't helping that much with a times one stack. It really helps hand cannons, it helps scouts, but AR's not so much. With kill clip, the actual damage numbers we now know, it's gonna be doing actually 33 to the head, in game it should say 34, but with kill clip, you can get off a six critical kill. It's gonna do 199, 200 damage. That's a 0.67 TTK, now we're talking. So if you're looking for lethality, I would say you're gonna be looking for tap the trigger or outlaw with kill clip, and I'm firm on that one. Now, that took a little bit, but that was really important to talk about, especially with how much time and grinding that's going into it, and we're gonna continue a little bit. As far as my thoughts, even knowing what we just went through on the damage numbers, it still does fine. And on PC, you might have issues, because we know what its damage numbers are doing, players a lot more accurate with mouse and keyboard. It's something you're gonna have to kind of try. I'm so new to mouse and keyboard, I cannot give you a very good answer on to if it's good or not. I really can't. So down in the comment section, if you have it or if you've used 450s with mouse and keyboard recently in the sandbox, let us know down below. So this is an auto rifle, spray and go. This happens to be very stable. And again, I'm not gonna say that it's amazing because if it was amazing, then 450 RPM ARs have been slept on for a couple years now. That's just not the case. But it is a really fun weapon for general play, 6v6 quick play, playing with your friends. You can throw it on, put up good games with it. I've had a ton of good ones already. And honestly, a precision frame with Zen moment is a pretty cool combo. We can look at numbers all we want, but in-game players miss. You flinch them. The dynamics of a gunfight are all there. It's not all cut and dry as a .93 TTK. I've outdueled scouts, I've outdueled hand cannons, SMGs, all of them. The feel of the weapon's great, it's fun. So in conclusion, in, to answer that question, is it worth it to grind for? Even knowing what we know now, I'm gonna tell you yes, but there are exceptions. If you're looking for a new meta weapon in your loadout for the Crucible or PvE, this is not it. If you have super high expectations, this is probably going to let you down. If you've been watching and you do play optimally, and again there's nothing wrong with that, you probably already know the answer. If you're not going to use it, you're not going to use it, nothing wrong with that. But on the other hand, it's in an entirely different rotation. You know how when you're raiding and doing higher end activities, you're kind of switching things out. Tractor cannon, Izanagi, spike grenade launchers, recluse, mountaintop, for an encounter you find that perfect pairing. This is on that other rotation, the low end of things, opposed to that high end. It's good for general play. You throw it on every now and again, and you have a little fun with it, and you don't really know what's gonna happen in the future. There was a point in time where grenade launchers were a laughing stock, but look at them today. We don't know what's gonna get buffed, and I'm telling you right now, this archetype deserves a buff. If there was anything that needs a buff in the future, it's these precision frame auto rifles. And who knows, maybe they might revisit multi-kill clip again, damage dealing perks. So with those considerations, it's gonna be worth it to pick it up. You wanna get it or not with all these things in mind that we talked about today. And to me personally, when it's time for raids, I throw on what's needed. But for PvP, I'm pretty chill in there. I'm the type of guy that throws on Hush and I already have over a thousand PvP kills with it, not because I'm looking to crush the opposition. It's because it's a challenge for me and it's a very, very high skill gap on console. And a lot of times when I play, I pick eight random weapons from my vault and I've kept them because they have good rolls. I'll throw them and switch them and rotate them every game. But that's just the type of player that I am, and I know everyone's not like that. But consider everything talked about in today's video. Its perk set is really good for what it does, the flow of the weapon. But on the opposite end, truly, it kind of has some issues. I would like to thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. If you are new here, remember to hit the sub button, ring the bell, that way you get videos right as they drop. And if you are subbed, thank you so much. And that is my in-depth review for the Festival of the Lost Bray Tech Werewolf. What do you think about this auto rifle? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.